Thank you, Senator Taylor. Has he already been up once? Is this, we're going back around? No. <laughs> he has been up once. Um, this is now a second reading, so he can speak again. Okay, okay. On third reading, I intend to stay in my seat. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I won't take long. You've given this a lot of time and unquestionably dedication. Of, of the 75% of operating and maintenance part of, of the budget that this covers, this is from general revenue, not the foundation school program, correct? Correct. Um, I have a couple of questions. And, and the first is, is it comes from, the, from general revenue into directly for the students, it would be, I think, by any description, an entitlement. Do you see it that way? Well, it's not like some of the other entitlements we have by uh, federal law that we just have to do it if, if the number of students show up. We, we can limit this at some point in the future. We could do any number of things. As you know, we can't bind future legislatures. This is not a constitutional amendment. So it's something we, ha we have flexibility with. In limiting, it's just a point that, that I wish to make in this question. Let's say in a future, clearly you lay out what it is today. So let's say in a future budget, a future chairman of, of the Finance Committee, Senator Nelson in the near term, a future Senator Nelson, which we should call here and after the Jane, decides that, that more money from general revenue is not available. And so it has to be cut back like so many things that we fund in general revenue. What do you think the possibilities are that much like in Edgewood 1 through 4, West Orange Cove 1 and 2, that people could file a lawsuit, just as in these things, for uh, cutting down on that entitlement? Well, for one, the way it's structured, I don't think they would do that based on the fact that the, as the number of students who goes into this program, we actually save more money. So why would a future finance chair want to cut a program that's saving us money and giving children more options? Oh, no, I agree with you. I don't know that. But if someone were to say, because this money is coming from general revenue and is subject to a general appropriation act, that if a finance committee and a Senate or a legislature decided, like in, in 2011, that there weren't adequate funds and then chose to cut back on it, that what would keep someone from filing a lawsuit like the ones filed here? Well, once again, using your logic, if they cut back on the spending of a, of a resource that's actually saving them more money than it's costing, they would actually increase their expenses by cutting back on that expenditure. It does increase the state's expenditures by cutting back on it. I'm, I'm sorry, it does. I'm just talking about if you lower the general appropriation. But right, but that general appropriation you're talking about lowering yes. is what's saving us more money than we're, and it's actually costing us. If you cut the general appropriation, it cuts the amount of money that would it go would with each child to a, to a private school, correct? That would reduce our savings because less students would have available to go do that. But it cuts down on the money available to the student, and it's over the money available for each student over which these lawsuits have been filed. Isn't that correct? Well, those lawsuits were filed, if, you're, if I remember correctly, on equity issues, that we weren't using the same amount of money. In they were also areas. filed on adequacy issues, and those were the ones that the courts most found in favor of. Well, I don't think you're going to find someone who's being given additional money to go to a private school complaining about the... The, uh, That's the question. What if they're given less, not more? I just, I can't see that lawsuit. And, and, and I think the, what raises the point is, on the last page of the bill, when it talks about the legal entanglement, it clearly states that it has to do with lawsuits on constitutional grounds. And, <clears throat> and in this case, it's the implementation of the program. And I'm curious why this is included in here because it would seem to indicate that someone expects a, I assume, a valid constitutional challenge to Senate Bill 3. Was that your thinking in, in constituting this bill? Well, I, I think where you'll see that wording coming from is because there have been states where they've had challenges on this and then they've had to go through the process. And so that they put that wording in there to protect against that. But, you know, we have two parts of this. If one part was ruled unconstitutional, the other part still exists. and those stuff. So that is in there knowing that sometimes other states have had the experience. 
the, the fortunate thing we have is we go by other states' experience and we drafted our law and crafted it in such a way that we should fit those constitutional requirements, but you still have to have your, your belt and suspenders. But, yeah, but what concerns me that it doesn't in the case of a lawsuit filed about a reduction in general appropriation for this purpose. Yeah, I guess you can have a lawsuit filed on anything. People can file lawsuits, but I can't take that into account in every bill that I pass about what lawsuit could be filed down the road. We, we'll have lawsuits filed on our overall school finance system. Uh, this is a small part of it. I guess you could have a lawsuit on that. But we will, I mean, I, I think the one thing we can be sure of, is there will be lawsuits filed at some point in the future, but I don't think that's our, the important part of our decision today on this bill as whether or not we're, how we're going to deal with that lawsuit. This bill, as you know, can change over time. It may expand. It may shrink. It could go away or it could become, you know, as more people, if we have a wait list for that $25 million, we may very well be back here in a session or two having to expand that $25 million to, to be a larger number. I can't tell you the future. Uh, I, I think this is a great opportunity, and, and that's the bill we have before us today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator.